guys, Dr. Mobin. So we are talking about the genetics of immunoglobulins, uh, one of the very exciting topic, and I sometimes see very confusing topic, is the DNA rearrangements, and that topic is actually very exciting as well. It's a very interesting topic. So let's talk about that. DNA rearrangement, to an extent, is used for immunoglobulins. It is also used for the T cell receptor binding sites as well. So this will be the DNA rearrangement for the uh, idiotypical sites or antigen binding sites. We are not talking about the DNA rearrangement, which is called class switch recombinase for the class switching. That is a different concept. We will talk about it today, maybe the next lecture. This one is antigen binding site. So I have drawn the antigen multiple times now. I am just going to uh, draw a simplified version here. So we are talking here. This is the fraction antigen binding and we are talking about the reasons for the diversity in the antigen binding site. So for that, in the last lecture we talked about the gene pools. In this lecture we are going to use the gene pool and then we are going to see how the genetic rearrangement and how alternate splicing is done to create various kinds of immunoglobulin structures. So, um, first thing to notice that antigen binding site 10 raised to power 7 to 10 raised to power 9 antigen binding sites are possible in a person. Uh, at one time there are 10 raised to power 7 sites available. So that means 10 million B cells are present with the IgM sticking on their surfaces and IgD sticking on their surfaces and these uh, have of course different antigen binding site. Every B cells immunoglobulin has different antigen binding site and I think you know that one B cell can only make or does only make the immunoglobulin that has only one kind of antigen binding site. But if you talk about one million that means a million different cells express a million different kinds of antigen binding sites or immunoglobulins with the antigen binding site. So having said that let us talk about how the DNA rearrangement occurs. In the same concept, we will talk about junctional diversity, P, uh, P and N nucleotides as well. So let us see if we can cover these concepts. This is the most important concept here. Again, this is not related to the class switching. That is a different thing. This is the antigen binding site variation. So let us do it. So I am going to make the genes here. So let us say we have V region. So V region gene pool. So about 68 to 70 genes in this gene pool. So we let us call them V region 1 gene number 1, V region gene number 2 and so on up to V region gene number 70. Let us let's make it easy, 70 genes. The genes that are present in the 70 pool, every one of them can be used to make the same part of the antigen binding site. So that means you can take any one of them. It is not necessary that you take V1 and V2. Actually, you cannot take V1 and V2. Just one of them is going to go. So first thing that there are um, RSSs attached with the genes. So these are recognition, recognition signal sequences. What does that mean? These sequences that are attached to the genes are actually signal, signals for the enzymes called RAG1 and RAG2. Recombination, recombinase activation gene 1 and recombinase activation gene 2. So these are complex proteins about 1000 and more amino acids. So not simple proteins, big complexes, they do a lot of fun stuff. But for us this is important here to understand two genes RAG1 and RAG2. These two genes are going to be able to, uh, to be attached to RSS. That is why it is called RSS recognition signal sequence. Sequence of amino acids that is or, or nucleotides, why did I say amino acids? that is for the recognition and for signaling and that is for the RAG. Now 
if we expand upon the recognition signal sequence a little bit, the sequence looks like this. It has a heptamer, heptamer means 7 things. So, here we have 7 nucleotides and then it has a nonamer that means 9 nonamer, nonamer here that means 9 nucleotides and intervening here between them here are either 12 base pairs or 22, some books say 23, so whatever you are reading use that, 22 base pairs. What does that mean? So really if you look at it, 12 base pairs plus 7 plus 9, so 7 plus 12 plus 9 is the, so the, what is that, 21, 28? 28 nucleotide long sequence, right? So, that is one possibility. What is the other possibility? The other possibility is 7 plus 22 plus 9. So, that will be what? 31, 38, right? So, either 38 nucleotides or 22 nucleotide sequences. So, these are these guys. Interestingly, there is a rule called 1222 rule or one loop, two loop rule. What that, what that rule is that if there is, there are genes that have 22, that have 12 base pair dif distances between them or that have RSS signals which have 12 base pairs different distances between them, then these genes cannot connect with each other. So, that is one way, otherwise here is a problem. The problem is these RAG gene uh, enzymes are going to pick up these genes and combine them. We do not want them to pick up all V1s and combine them. We do not want the RAG to pick up V1 and V2 and join it. We do not want it to pick up D1 and D2 and join it. We do not want it to pick up J1 and J2 and join it. So, to make sure that it does not do that, we have this little rule, this protein can only com complex with 12 on one side and 22 on the other side. So, that is 12, 22 rule or one loop, two rule, loop rule. So, now what that means is then that our V gene rule, so let us say we have 12 base pair um, RSS here. So, all the RSS signals here which are present next to the genes are 12 base pair ones. So, that means if RAG came and tried to combine them, it cannot because two 12 base pair cannot be combined. Then let us go forward V and then D region. So, again D has D1, D2, and so on until let us say D28. Now, the D has a different structure for RSS over there. What that is is, so if I remove the D2 for a second just so I can explain this or let me put a D2 here. So, I remove D1 and I remove the other just to create some space. The, this one has RSS on both sides. Do you see that these guys have RSS on one side? Do you know why? It has RSS on both sides because it has to combine here and it has to combine on the J side, right? Now, what do you think the sequence, RSS sequence or base pair sequence should be here to be able to combine here? This one is 12. If this is 12 as well, then it will not combine, right? The rule is 12, 22. So, this has to be 22. So, this will be the RSS with the 22 base pair intervening sequence. Of course, all of these RSS have gotten a heptamer, a nonamer, and they have gotten the 12 or 22 base pairs in them. Good? Now, this means if an RAG enzyme comes along, it can pick up one of them and it can pick up one of this or these and combine them, at least from the rules point of view, we are good. Now, let us talk about the 
third pool and that is going to be um, blue, let's use blue, J, V, D, J. And again the same thing, let's say J1 and J, N. J actually only have, so what do you think? Number one, RSS is only on one side. What side? Towards the 5 prime. One more thing I should do is that when the gene, we look at this gene pool and the chromosomes, this is 5 prime side and this is 3 prime side. This is 3 prime side. So, 5 prime side here, 5 prime, 3 prime, 5 prime, 3 prime. So, now the, this RSS, if it is 22, then this has to be 12. If it is 12, which it is, then this has to be 22. Cool? So now we've gotten three gene pools. How many genes are here? A bunch of genes here. There are a bunch of genes in J. The, the thing that we need to now do is we need to pick up one gene from here, one gene from here, and one gene from here, and create DNA. So let's do that. RAG 1 and 2, they come, and they would pick up, they will attach. So uh, let's make the structure now. RAG, let's decide what are we going to pick. Let's say we are going to pick this guy, 2 here. We are going to pick 2 here, and we are going to pick J here, 1. So we are going to pick V2. D2 and J1 and make the DNA. This is called DNA re recombination. This is a DNA change that is happening. So the type of changes which you would see in immunoglobulin diversification are DNA rearrangements, messenger RNA alternate splicing, that is not for the combinatorial side, that is for the class switching, but still that happens. Then the light and heavy chain recombinations and then hypersomatic mutations. So you have to see that there are, this is the DNA phase change. Okay, back here, which gene is going to be picked up first? So different books say differently. Uh, Lange, which is my reference book, that says that D and V are combined first, one each, and then all the J are rearranged, all J, not one, all, and then RNA is supplies to remove all J except one. The other reference books which I have, they say that we start from the D and J combination, we take one from D and one from J, and then we combine it with the V. So I'm going to use the second one, and so what is going to happen is RAG 1 and 2 enzymes will combine these two. So what they do is, here is how they combine them, they'll attach here. So I'm going to make D2 here, and I'm going to make, we were going to take J1, right? So I'm going to make J1 here. The rest of the DNA is here, the rest of the DNA is here. RAG, one RAG attached here, another RAG attached here. What happened to the DNA between them? That DNA is here in the form of a loop. So it is just like this, that if you have a long thread, let me try to see if I can, I have a little thing here, I have a headphone here. So let's see if this is the gene. What RAGs do is, if this is RSS1 and this is RSS, another RSS, they come here and then they go out like this and they would separate this loop and then the loop will be cut off. And this is how the gene, the DNA has become combined. This also is very important to understand that once a loop of the DNA has become cut off, the, that particular B cell cannot reproduce that DNA. That is why if one a gene type has been selected, then the others will be removed. So that B cell cannot then produce another kind of idiotype this would also hold true for the heavy chain as well, that once a particular heavy chain has been selected, the heavy chains below that will still be possible, but the ones which have been removed will not be possible. We'll talk about that in the class switching.